Well, we've already said that we wouldn't change the law on abortion, and what he's saying is completely false. We will protect women. We will protect women with legislation against violence, violence that has shot up by 53 percent after nine years of this prime minister because of his policies that releases the most violent reoffenders. Now, will the prime minister allow Quebecers to vote to stop crime by putting true criminals behind bars and by making our border safer? The right honourable prime minister, Mr. Speaker. Women in Canada know full well that to be pro-choice means standing up against all those who seek to limit women's rights, who seek to take rights away from women, as we've seen in the U.S. And what we see from this conservative leader over and over again is that he is incapable of standing all about up to division of his guy. own caucus who would like to access, limit access to abortion and who even vote in favor of measures. He even votes in favor of those members. It's shameful, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Completely false, and I could use another word outside of the House to describe uh, stating a falsehood knowingly, but we'll save that for when we, when we are outside the House. Mr. Speaker, the reality is that after nine years of this Prime Minister's policies, gun crime is up 120 yep. percent. He's put all the resources into targeting lawful, law-abiding, trained and tested duck hunters and blown $67 million dollars without recovering a single solitary gun that he promised four years ago to ban. Why, why, why wouldn't we let Canadians vote to stop the crime and put the real gun criminals in jail? $67 million on infrastructure, software? Yes, Doesn't make any sense. Every time the leader of the opposition stands up to rhyme off his little show, all his MPs... Nasty, right on the Prime Minister, to start from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, every time the leader of the opposition gets up on his feet to rhyme off his little show, his party members applaud uh, enthusiastically. But the two times he just stood up to suggest that he is perhaps pro-choice, silence from his team, Mr. Speaker. He cannot protect women's rights from the members of his own caucus, Mr. Speaker. That's not standing up for women. That's not protecting the future. That's not freedom in this country. All right. Somebody go find the woman who had to sign that NDA. Let's get some investigations going on that, huh? West Point Gray. Colleagues, colleagues, the honourable leader of the opposition. Speaker, what we're seeing from this erratic performance today is a prime minister who is like a. Can I ask the honourable member from Richmond Hill to please keep it, stay quiet, as the Trudeau's unhinged man. The honourable leader of the opposition from the top, please. Beyond the normal fear and falsehoods, what we're seeing from this Prime Minister today is someone who is erratic and lost control of himself because he is so desperate. <laughs> my question was about car theft. My next one is about Nanaimo drug dens. Drug dens which now are funded and authorized by this government through a permit under the Control and Substance Act which was now cracked down upon by police officers for trafficking illegal substances and having 13 weapons. Will the Prime Minister stop giving the permits for these illegal drug dens so that we can stop the crime and bring home safety? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, we recognize that far too many Canadians have been impacted by the opioid epidemic, by the toxic d drug crisis. That is why we're doubling down on science and supports on, on the street. We're there to look at uh, ways to help families through this, uh, to deal with addictions, uh, to lift people out of poverty. And yes, we will partner with people right across the country to do that on things that make sense in their jurisdictions. We're going to stay grounded in science uh, while the leaders opposite uh, choose uh, their ideology as uh, guiding paths. Tomorrow, the bloc will have to vote on a motion to decide, yes or no, if they're going to keep the most centralizing and costly government in power in the history of Canada. What's bad is for Quebec are costs that have doubled in terms of housing and the doubling of the national debt. The Quebec Premier says that the Quebec nation doesn't want to show its confidence in this government. And even after the Minister of Immigration, the Liberal Minister, said that he broke the immigration system, and even if the Minister doesn't have trust in his, uh, in his track record, why should the Bloc have uh, trust in him or them? It's they, them? Once again. Likely. You have raised this issue yesterday and last week. You need to address questions to the government. I see that the Honourable Minister is standing to answer, but I'd just like to remind members that it's important for questions to be relevant to the government administration so that members can provide clear answers. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Conservative leader, after 20 years in this House, does not understand yet how the House works. One thing they don't still understand is the importance of dental care for Quebecers. He talks about hurting Quebecers. What does he tell Quebecers in my region? Don't sign up for the Canadian Dental Care Program because it doesn't exist. While in Quebec, there are 800,000 seniors that are signed up for dental care. He's telling them, don't sign up. It doesn't exist. No, no, no. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition, this government has doubled housing costs for people in the Quebec region and tripled the cost of housing in Montreal and made the cost of food skyrocket so that too many Canadians have had to go to food banks every month. It's also pushed Quebec to the, point, the breaking point with an immigration system that the Liberal Minister himself has said is broken. So the Quebec nation does not want a centralizing and costly government. Will the members vote for an election to elect a common sense government? The Honourable Minister of Tourism, Mr. Speaker, there's a, a great deal of hypocrisy in this question. They're worried about people's lives, they say, but the Conservative leader isn't able to say clearly what his hidden agenda is. When the member for Grasslands has a trip paid to go to Florida, where he can sell a vision that is anti-abortion and anti-women's rights. And the first thing they need to do is control their caucus and reassure women here in Canada that their rights will not be affected. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South. The Liberals are too weak to stand up to Doug Ford, so some patients are leaving surgeries with thousands of dollars of bills. The Liberals are too weak to stand up to Daniel Smith. And so people in our province are forced to, wow. to see a doctor. See, that's what Conservatives do. They cut and gut health care so their big business buddies can use that to make, rip off Canadians even more. Why is the Liberal government letting Conservatives privatize our health care system? The Honourable Minister of Health. Well, Mr. Speaker, if you're going to be talking about being too weak, two days after the NDP leader got a letter from the leader of the Conservative opposition saying to back out of standing up for pharmacare and standing up for improvements in the health care system, he ran away. 
And if he ran away from that, how is he going to stand up for Canadians, is what I would ask, Mr. Speaker. And I would say that we had a chance. We were working well together. We got things done on dental. 750,000 people, over 80 percent of providers. We were working well together on pharmacare. If he has ideas, he knows we were all ears. But he's all about politics, Mr. Speaker. He's all about trying to divide. He's got a southern accent. He's all about politics, Mr. Speaker. Or am I making that up? I heard I heard a little twang on there. Colleagues. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. The Conservative Premier's privatized our health care system and have done nothing about it. You're here. The, the last Conservative government slashed health care funding by $43.5 billion. This, represent, this represents more than 60,000 nurses every year. But now the Conservative Premiers like Francois Legault are privatizing our health care system and the Liberals are doing nothing about it. Why are the Liberals doing nothing to protect people and Canadian health care legislation? The Honourable Minister of Health. I get frustrated because there is an existential crisis facing our health system and it is represented in the person of the Conservative leader whose cuts and approach to health care, to destroy pharmacare, to attack dental care, to undermine the deals that we've signed with provinces and territories, greatly menace this thing that we treasure, public health. And the investments that we made, they must continue. The progress we made must continue. That's why I urge parliamentarians to stand up against what the Conservatives would do to this health system and work collaboratively to make sure that we get the care that every Canadian here, deserves. Here. The Honourable Member from Foothills. For nine years, the NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up. And yes, time, time is, up. is up. According to Liberal NDP's government's own statistics, the number of Canadians suffering with food insecurity is up 111 wow. percent. That is a quarter of Canadians who don't know where their next meal is coming from. But there is a solution. Axe the carbon tax and give Canadians the relief they need. They know that 70 percent of Canadians want to axe the tax. Will they listen to Canadians tomorrow and call a carbon tax election? Yeah. 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 The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It would be great in this House if the official opposition actually worked with facts. The vast majority of Canadians get more money back. We have a climate plan that is actually working, fighting the existential threat of climate change, but it is also creating economic opportunity and prosperity for the future. We have seen over 100 clean growth projects, $60 billion of investment. It's the $12 billion now invested in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. It's the Janssen Potash Mine. It's the Soyona Lithium Plant in Quebec. It is a plan that is working. They have no plan for the future on the environment and no plan on the economy. Wait, didn't a lithium factory just like blow up yesterday <laughs> or this morning in Montreal? Here is what their plan is doing. The Liberal NDP carbon tax is driving up costs on farmers, on truckers, on food manufacturers and prices at the grocery store and Canadians can't afford to put food on the table. According to Food Banks Alberta, use is up 73 percent and 40 percent of those are children. Meanwhile, the Liberal NDP government say, hey, Canadians have never had it so good. Well, food banks are struggling just to meet demand. If the Liberal NDP government thinks that their carbon tax is so great, will they call a carbon tax election tomorrow and let Canadians decide? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Lac St. Jean. Mr. Speaker, all this fuss and for what? For a year now, Quebec has been demanding a fair distribution of asylum seekers among the, amongst the provinces. And today, the Minister of Immigration announced that this will not happen and that the task force is coming to an end. There will be no distribution except for the only two willing provinces, uh, Newfoundland and Manitoba. Um, for them, they understand that forcing Quebec to take in asylum seekers from all over Canada is creating a humanitarian crisis. This is appreciated, but their effort won't be enough. Can the minister accept such a colossal failure? No, no, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. I stand with the member opposite to help asylum seekers and put a roof over their heads. And I understand the issue of the Quebec 
but we are there for Quebecers and we're going to help them fix this problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. Newfoundland and Manitoba together represent 5% of the Canadian population, and if they do their fair share, Quebec will only be relieved of 5% of their burden of receiving asylum seekers. Neither Quebecers or asylum seekers will notice a difference in the inadequate supply of services. All provinces have to participate. Quebecers don't have to take care of all of Canada's asylum seekers on behalf of Canadians. What is the minister doing? to get Canada to stop shoveling its responsibilities onto Quebecers. The Honourable Minister... Put them all in Ottawa, man. Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Right across Parliament. The reality is that immigration and citizenship is federal jurisdiction, and we do work with the provinces and territories. If citizenship was provincial jurisdiction, this would be something else, but Canada is still a country today. And the good news is that we work very closely and very effectively with the Quebec government on many issues with respect to immigration and uh, welcoming asylum seekers. Things are going well, but when things do go better and better, the bloc uh, doesn't find this to be such a good thing. Have- the Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. Let's talk about the four conservative provinces that refuse to help Quebec. These conservatives have never done their fair share, refuse to take in one single extra person while Quebec receives half of Canada's Whoa. asylum seekers. Whoa. Have you ever heard the federal conservatives ask their people to help hey. Quebecers? We have never. According to the minister... Yeah, you guys want to be your own country, man. Like, ugh, come on. More time here in the House telling their people to help with asylum seekers and less time... At, in at Florida, creationist churches talking about uh, talking against abortion. Once again, I'd like to remind members that questions should be addressed to the government administration. I see that the minister is rising to answer this question, so I will recognize him, the Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yes, yes, I have a lot to say about the Conservatives' hidden agenda, but I'll leave uh, the Conservatives uh, to discuss that. But let's talk about something that's more relevant for Quebec members, at least in this issue. It's in terms of our relationship with the Quebec government. In recent weeks, we made three announcements that are cooperative with respect to immigration, with respect to foreign temporary workers, twice about foreign students, and on several other occasions as well. So things will be going better and better.